And welcome to the Kansas City Public Library. I'm Henry Fortunato, Director of Public Affairs. It is now my pleasure to open the plenary session of the Kansas City chapter of Vegans Anonymous. <laughs> Our feature presentation will begin momentarily when Crosby Kemper unveils his 20 newest recipes for Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Raw Brussels sprouts. Actually, that's next week. This week, the library continues celebrating Global Entrepreneurship Week, an initiative, a worldwide initiative of the Kauffman Foundation. It seeks to promote and encourage the entrepreneurial imperative. We've been doing that for much of this year with our latest series, our series that was called the best library series by the pitch just about a month ago. It's called Kansas City Cradle of Entrepreneurs. This series features a sequence of public conversations conducted by everyone's favorite library director with some of our area's most notable and successful entrepreneurs. Our guest tonight is Ollie Gates, the king of Kansas City Barbecue. About a month ago, Crosby and Chapter Kazitan, our uh, Deputy Executive Director, and I met with Ali just to do a little pre-conversation. If it's even half as good as what we got, you're in for a treat tonight. I will say no more. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ali Gates and Crosby Kemper. Look, I, I, I ought to say, eight, hi, may I help years. you? That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, may I help yeah, you? Yeah, that's huh? fine. Okay. Never, if though, for those that don't know what that means, uh, ask somebody next to you. <laughs> right, yeah, right, right, right. I think pro my, my guess is looking at this crowd, every, everybody here has been, has, has been eating Gates Barbecue, not only tonight, but yeah. over, the, over hope... the years. Over the years. Well, most people, I think, think that this all started with barbecue. Um, and, and the Gates name is synonymous in Kansas City with barbecue. But your father when he got tired of being a porter or a waiter on the, on the railroad, uh, tired of being uh, away from home, bought a place called Old Kentuck, Johnny's Old Kentuck, is that this, this right, um, uh, in 1946. And it really was, it wasn't so much a barbecue place when, when he bought it, it was really, in your words, a speakeasy, is that right? Well, let's don't call it a speakeasy. Let's oh, <laughs> sorry, it's a word I heard it, from it him. Was, it was after, after the hours. Place. You know, we, we opened up really when the, in the old days, uh, all of the taverns in Kansas City closed at 1 30 in the morning. So we still opened that door. Is not right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, the, the taverns closed at 1 30. We stayed open to 3 o'clock to catch that 1 30 crowd. They had nowhere else to go, so we, we, we called it after hours, not the city. Okay, an after hours place. But the barbecue kind of kind of came came after the uh, the the the, uh, the drinking part, or it was it, wa it wasn't really the center of it until your mother got involved. Well, my dad really wanted to go into the tavern business. To be honest with you, he tried to buy a uh, uh, a place down the street on 24th Terrace and uh, Prospect. Uh, I think later on they opened up a restaurant there, but. The Fathers Club at uh, Booker T. Washington School at that time wouldn't allow it to, to do that. We were, too, we were too close to the school, even though the I think you're not even Mike, so they're going to oh, give you, gonna Mike's, Mike Mike is going to give you this, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Pull it up a little closer. We're recording this for posterity. So All right. <laughs> Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, as I was saying, Dad uh, was going to open up at 24 Terrace in Prospect. There was a restaurant open there later on. I, won't, I don't remember the name of it. But the Fathers Club at Booker T. Uh, grade school there at uh, 24th and Prospect said we were too close to the school. We were within that 300-yard spot, so right. Dad, uh, 300 foot distance. So they couldn't open up that, at that point, even though... Callison Swartz, if you remember, the grocery store right across the street was selling liquor. <laughs> but we couldn't open up, you know what I mean? Because right, we yeah, were too yeah, close. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but they could sell liquor, you know what I mean, right across the street from the school. But anyway, uh, 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 another fellow on 26th and uh, uh, Prospect uh, had a, um, 
a green duck had a tavern there. It's quite famous now. Um, the green duck, yeah. Yeah, green duck. So they, that was okay. So Dad said, well, we couldn't, couldn't open up there. And so a fellow by the name of Robert Williams, who was a big real estate man at that time in Kansas City, uh, he had a brother-in-law named Johnny Thomas. Uh, and Johnny Thomas owned that place called Old Kentuck. Old Kentuck. Yeah. And that's why they called it Old Johnny's Old Kentuck, you see. Right. And so Old Johnny wanted to get out of the business, so Old Gatesy bought in. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he and a fellow by the name of um, Johnny Huspath. Dad went in business with a guy by the name of... He was his partner. Of, well, they were, partner. they were buddies on the railroad when Dad right. got off, and so they went in as partners. That lasted one week. Right, right. Yeah, that lasted one week. Then the fight broke out. Well, your dad so, was kind of a pretty tough guy. Oh, he? man, yeah. I mean, he was tough. He was, I think he was, um, he weighed 160 pounds, uh, and he was about 5 foot 11, but you thought he was a giant. You know what I mean? Right. I did anyway. Uh, right. So, but, yeah, he was, he was hard to get along with. I mean, you, you didn't ruffle his feathers too much, and uh, he was a pretty tough guy. But you had right. to be. I mean, he, he was And you, he and was you worked raising. for him. I mean, you worked for him in, in grade school or, or high school? I worked for him. That's not what he said. I, he said, I work for myself if oh, I want right, to eat. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, said, in yeah. fact, you know, one, su one Sunday I asked him for a day off. I said, well, Dad, can I, can I have Sunday off? He said, do you eat on Sunday? I said, <laughs> you, <laughs> you work on Sunday, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. So that's where that went. Okay. Yeah. Gives a whole new meaning to 24-7, I guess. Yeah. yeah all yeah. time. And, and, and so you, 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 you grew up with this very, very tough taskmaster of a, a father. Your mother was a, was a little, little bit different. She, she was uh, your, a little your bit different than what? Well, she, my mother ran everything, including the taskmaster. Okay, I mean, so she was tough. So uh, we're, we're, at, we're adding on. It was kind of a tough life for you, wasn't you know, it? No, not really. You know, I had both sides of it dad and mama, and I had a grandma I could run to, too. Right. Uh, oh yeah. Or okay. run from it sounds like. Oh, no, Grandma, no, I didn't have to run from her. She wasn't. She was. She was pretty nice. She she kind of handled things smoothly. She didn't believe in the violence. My mother believed in violence though. So. Oh, okay. Uh, the but, worst woman I ever got was opening up the Christmas package. You know. Right. Oh man, I opened it up before Christmas. Uh oh. Oh man, she woke me up one night. Uh, uh oh. And yeah. what happened? Well, she she woke me up with a belt. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah. Why did you it. skate on those skates before Christmas? Yeah. I said because I found them in the closet. Yeah. And so I thought they should be worn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, so you, both your mother and father had very high standards, maybe in a slightly. Well, different I think way. so. They and high morals. Right. Both of them. Yes. And, and so you 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 learned that obviously at a very young age, and you 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 went off to uh, uh, to to college. You went off to the University of Maryland, where you were a great football player. Not right? University of Maryland. Sorry? Maryland? Maryland State College. Maryland State College, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Okay. University of Maryland at that time was like the University of Missouri. They wouldn't allow me. I understand. I understand. Okay, okay. So, so Maryland State College, where Maryland you played State football. At Princess Anne. And, and, and I understand you're, they, they have a sports hall of fame and you're in it. Oh, bless their heart. They didn't know what they were doing, but they yeah, didn't okay. know. Yeah, okay. Okay. But anyway, so you, and 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 uh, but but there, there you said that that you really needed a car that that maybe a car was more important than certain parts of your education. Yeah, well, not really, but see, Princess Anne, I think I mentioned where Maryland State was. It was a little town south of another town called Salisbury, Maryland, and that was 14 miles away. And the only way that you could get to any entertainment for a college kid on Friday or Saturday night was sit out on highway number 13 and thumb your way to, to Salisbury. So that got kind of old my freshman year because one night I had to walk 14 miles to get back to campus. Holy and God. I said, that won't work. No. Right. So, uh, no, I, I, so you I made challenged a my dad. You made a deal with your dad. I challenged him. I said, man, if you let me give me a car, I'll go to Lincoln University. So Lincoln yeah. University yeah. in Jefferson City, Missouri, yeah. which you'll note is what, 120 miles from Kansas 140. City? 140. 140. That's correct. Okay, 140 miles from, yep. from Kansas City. So That's your right. deal with him was you got a car, yeah. but you had to work. Come every weekend, in the restaurant. come on work. That's correct. Okay. That's right. That's kind of a long commute for a job. Not when you don't like walking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I, 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 I understand that. I understand yeah. that. So, so you're, you're, you're working for your, for your dad, yeah. and, and eventually you, you get uh, uh, a building trades degree from Lincoln. Is that right? Building that right? trade, yes. Building trades. And if, I, if, I, if I'm correct, you, you actually had some experience building. Uh, your, your dad had, uh, family had a restaurant at 195th Street. Is that right? No, uh, so? no, no. No? 195th. I don't know. I, no. In here, it was bad. 80s, no. 1980s <laughs> journalism, no. really no, bad. What, what happened was, but but you built a barbecue. Pit. I built a barbecue. Uh, it's Wherever there. the hell it was. Yeah, well, 19th and Vine. That's where it was. 19th and Vine. 19th okay. and Vine. Bad that's, copy editing. Yeah, that's 19th and Vine. Yeah, we built. I was in high school. I took a trade at high school. Uh, uh, Lincoln High School had at that time Kansas City had one high school where we could attend, and the other was a junior high and vocational school, and that was R.T. Coles. And so I took a trade there at R.T. Coles. I took masonry. My dad told me that uh, you better learn to do something with your hands because your head is kind of light, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I took a trade. I learned to lay brick, and I'm, I consider myself a bricklayer. And so I built a barbecue pit at uh, night. It's still there. It's still there in the building. It's still okay. there. Okay, yeah. that's great. That's great. So you, you're you're uh, you're 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 cleaning up in the in the barbecue business for your before father. I go to school in the morning. Right. Yes, I cleaned it up at nighttime. Then went to school. But after you graduate, you go to work full time. Is after that right? I graduate where? From Lincoln, not the high Lincoln, school, the college. High, Lincoln University. University. No, I went to the army. Oh, that's right. So you go, so you go into the oh, army. Yeah, I went to the army. Go into the engineers. You're an engineer yeah. because you're in building yeah. trades. Did my two years. Right. Okay. Yeah, six years there of, of inactive duty. Right. Two years of active, six years of inactive, eight years obligation. Right. Yeah. And so, you, but you come out of the the engineers, and that what year is that roughly? Nineteen fifty. I went in fifty four. I came out fifty six. October fifty six. Yeah. And, and in in the meantime, your 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 father, if I've got this correct, had had moved the uh, the main main store, the main restaurant, to twenty fourth and. Uh, Charlotte, is that right? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, sorry, 24th and Brooklyn, right. Yeah, we, we, we burned out it in 1951 while I was at Lincoln and at 19th and Vine, and we went to 24th and Brooklyn. My brother-in-law stayed there at 19th and Vine, named that particular restaurant the Dixieland. The Dixieland, yeah, right. The sign's right. still up. Right. Yeah. But I remember the, the 24th and Brooklyn because uh, yeah. you were close to the, to the ballpark. ballpark. Oh, yeah, that, and, was, that was heyday. It's, is that is that part of what what made the made the restaurant uh, such a success? You were close to the ballparks, you like big big crowds. No, before and after man, the game? Our, our product made us famous. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, not the ballpark. Yeah, okay, <laughs> all right. All that right. was add-on, I tell you. Let me tell you something. The guys that did the announcing down there did a great job, though. I tell you that. Mel Harmon and that group, uh, absolutely. And, and if I remember correctly, you provided barbecue to them sometimes. Absolutely. So you might mention <laughs> absolutely. that. Absolutely. Very wise. Yeah, very but it wise. was a wise move, I'll tell you, because they do that today. Yeah. If you notice, most of the major leagues, do, you know, they do a whole lot with barbecue. You know, a bunch of different fellows nowadays, but uh, they do it all. Well, and what's the, 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 the secret for your father or your father and mother? Or there was a guy named Arthur, Arthur, uh, Arthur Pinkard. Pinkard, who was uh, w with your father. Dad, well, Dad got him when he bought the place, he got to cook. Right, got to yeah. cook. What, what was the secret? What was the, the Gates barbecue secret? I mean, can you tell us now? Can yeah. you reveal the secret? I can tell you what it was. My mother's personal taste. She was a great taster. She had great taste buds. And my mother really ran things. Whatever happened, you know. In fact, let me let me tell you, my mother is one that transformed that from a being a after hour spot to a legitimate business. She wasn't she said, a fan yeah, of whiskey. Say what? She wasn't a fan of whiskey. She, was a, she, was, she wasn't against she wasn't against cocktails as she calls them, but they're in the proper place. Right. And the way they were serving them there wasn't the proper way to do right. it. Right. And, and and I mean it should be it should be noted unlike a lot of barbecue places in uh, in town uh, that you you do still serve liquor that's oh, yeah. always been a, a major part of uh, beer what you barbecue do. and beer will barbecue and beer go well pretty together, well yes. pretty well together as yeah, I think they did tonight item. yeah a absolutely and, and there's also a, there's a social aspect to what what made made things a success and uh, and. And also the 18th and Vine in 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 the 40s and before, obviously in the 20s, the 30s, and the 40s yeah. was a, was a different kind of a a, a place. And you, you've talked about that in, in the past yeah, about segregation in one way yeah. 
it helped small businesses in, in it at did. Well, it didn't help small business, it helped black business. Help black businesses. Yeah, they helped black business. Well, see, that area from 9th to 29th, Truth to Prospect, was uh, mandated to us as an area to really do that. We did right. a little uh, on the sides here and there. But that was a mandated area where you could do business and live and work and eat and go to school and education and everything else. But pretty much there was, there was there, everything. There were, there were tailors and, and uh, hotels, and, and all, but all yep. run by African Americans at, at that well, point, or most of them. Mo most of them were run by them, but I wouldn't say all of them, yes. But everybody did business there because you had a contingency that couldn't spend money anywhere but in that area. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and so uh, you, you get into the business with your father. My dad got into the business. Your, your dad's business. Yeah, my dad. And, 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 and talk about a little bit about as you, as you get older and, you, and you're in the business with your dad, and he changes the name of, <laughs> of the business uh, once you're in the business. Yeah. Well, it, first, you know, we started out, we, we bought the place from old Johnny, Johnny Thomas, and it was uh, old Johnny's old Kentucky, old Kentucky Barbecue. And then when Dad bought it, then it became Old Kentuck Barbecue. And then as we grew into the business, it became Gates Old Kentuck Barbecue. And then as I came into the business, it became Gates Old Kentuck Barbecue. And then he, he would take out Old Kentuck and it became Gates and Sons. But then when he would get mad at me, he would go get a can of paint and would paint <laughs> and son off. And so... <laughs> It became Gates, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> this sounds so familiar to me, I got to tell you. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, uh, I understand. You understand? <laughs> I understand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, but, but, but at a certain point, uh, he said to you, the kitchen isn't big enough for both of us? Well, that, that? Was, that, you know, that was in 1958. Uh, he decided that uh, I had, uh, he and I got into it about, uh, build, we built a building that, when I got out of the Army, you know, let me, let, me, let me try to explain to you what Army does to uh, youngsters. You know, I was like 22 when I went in, 23, somewhere like that, when right after I got out of college. And, and you go through all the Army training. Of course, I went to, I went to uh, 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 camp in, in uh, Colorado Springs, Camp Carson. I took some basic training there in a beautiful area to do some basic training up, up, in, the, up in Manitou Springs. I mean, there, we did our basic training up there in Manitou Springs. Then I did my EOBC I took at Fort Belvoir in Virginia, you know what I mean? So right. I was in Belvoir in Virginia and I came back home. But once you got back to Kansas City and, 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 you, and you had all that, that fluid in you, they, they called it in the Army piss and vinegar, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, right. I was full of it, you know what I mean? I mean, I wasn't satisfied, I was ready to go. I was, man, right. I, was I was chopping at the bit. I, I, I hit the ground, I had three pretty little daughters on the ground. I had to right. go, man, I had no time to fool around. Well, my dad wanted to fool around a little bit, and I said, man, listen, we, we have a hard time, so he said... You uh, wanted to expand at that well, point? Well, I had you to. to I, had, I had three kids, and was hard working for $27.50 a week at that time. That's right, know? yeah. And so I told him, I said, well, I tell you what, you pay my bills, man, and, and we'll call it Gates and Sons, of course, and, uh, and we'll be on our way. He, he's thought about that for a little while, and then we decided to build a joint at uh, 12th and Brooklyn, and... Uh, of course, we had no money, so we didn't figure how we was going to build that joint up there, but we did. I went to uh, Grand Avenue Bank. Jack Berry. You went Jack to Jack Berry. Berry. Yeah, sure. I do know Jack, that. Well, I, I've been reading up. <laughs> but, but also, my first boss in the banking business when I was 15 years old, yeah. when I was parking cars at the Grand Avenue Bank, was Jack Berry. Jack Berry. So I know the story. Yeah, you know the story. Too. Well, yeah. he... And Jack Berry was said uh, to me, he said, that when I went down to ask him for a loan, well, they told me when I was in the Army that you could get a loan, as being an officer, I could get a loan for $10,000. Well, that's about all I needed to build that joint was $10,000. So I went down to Grand Avenue Bank and asked them, would you loan me the $10,000 that I needed to, to build a joint that my dad and I were going to build at 12th and Brooklyn. He bought a junkyard on the corner of 12th and Brooklyn. I mean, it was a junkyard, too. So uh, I said, uh, he said, well, uh, listen, uh, uh, fella, uh, if you go down to the VA and they'll okay a loan, then I'll give it to you. Well, I went to the VA and they said, well, if you find somebody to lend you the money, we'll, we'll. <laughs> 
So I went oh, back to Jack Bear. Yeah, you know, kept back and forth via, right, yeah, right, right down yeah. the street. They were it wasn't a block apart. It was right there, right. 19th Street. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I went. I came back. I said, Well, uh, they said if, if if they would guarantee it, if you give it to me, he said, Listen, there's one barbecue joint already over there. Now, well, if you build another one on 12th and Brook, what am I going to do with it if you fail? I mean, what do you what do you mean? What are you going to do with it? He said, Well, I can't put no auto mechanic shop in that building. It ain't big enough. So what am I going to do with the building? I said, you're not going to lend me the money? He said, well, I'll think about it. Well, in the meantime, I went down to Dirk's Lumber Company and C.A. Brockett, which is 19 Vine, and they asked him to give me some concrete, and we built it ourselves. Right. right. Yeah, on credit. And, and, and you, 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 you say, you well, I will what? say this, though, Community State Bank on Truce did once we built the building and they everybody was clamoring money. for their money, they loaned us the money to pay right, for it. Yeah. Right, right. So you, so you got that done and, yeah. and, 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 and built that. Yeah. But, and that was with your... your yeah, your well, when I got it built, my dad kicked me out. Then he kicked you out. <laughs> yeah. Said right. you got to go. Gates and son became Gates. Once yeah, again. one yeah. more time. Yeah. Well, he said the but, business wasn't big enough for both right. of us. And so, 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 so you're out on your own and, and, and what did you do at that point? I went to, well, it happened to be right at Christmas time and I had a, a truck that I was, that did all my concrete work in, and so I went down to the post office and I was carrying mail the month of December of 1958. So I, you know, they put all the packages in the back of the truck, and I went out and passed them out Christmas time. So I, I made enough money to get the kids Christmas present at Christmas tree that year. Well, at that time I went by to see how my mother was doing. She and Dad were doing up on 12th Street. They were doing fine. And so I said, "Well, uh, Mom, how you doing?" She said, "Fine." She said, "Ollie, we got a place down there on." Uh, yeah, 12th and Highland, she said, but well, we closed it up because we didn't miss, she, she would, a guy by the name of Ollie Harris had a barbecue place there at that time, and so he had died and they closed it up, and mom and him had been using, but they closed up because they were 12th and Brooklyn right down the street. So they said, well, mom said, you want the place? I said, no, not particularly, you know. She said, but I'll give it to you, the deal. I said, well, this is, in, this is like December the 15th. Dad says, well, I want $3,000 for the place. <laughs> I said, Dad, you ain't got them in there but a raggedy pit and a slicer machine. I said, uh, $3,000? Mom said to Dad, she said, well, are we partners, George? He said, yeah, are we partners? She said, well, Ollie, you can have my half. Oh, yeah. So I mom said, came through Mom got, came through again. Yeah. yeah. So Dad said, well, I want my $100 a week. I said, well, you got a deal, pal. And so I went down there. So, and so you went down there and yeah. started a barbecue place yeah, there. Yeah, that was after he told me to get out of his place in the first place, though. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and you also started a place about the same time called OG's, which was a... Well, I took that place that we got there, and I bought the tavern next door that uh, it was called Havana Inn, and it had closed, and I bought that, and we took the two, and I took Havana Inn and changed the name for that, and took it to 31st in Indiana. And opened up a, 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 a nice nightclub. That was right. a joint. Right. Yeah. Oh, geez, nice nightclub. People remember that. Yeah. Nice nightclub. We opened that up in uh, 1961. Yeah. That's where we transferred that license there. Right. And so, and so the, but the, 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 the nightclub is, is, is making money, I assume. And, oh, and yeah. It did good. It did, did good. Oh, sort yeah. of supported God the barbecue it, place. I, I was scared to death. Oh, man. I tell you, we opened that thing on my mother's birthday. She's the luckiest lady in the world, over on her birthday. But the, the, we, we started remodeling that thing in December, and we took, and that was limit, December of 19, uh, January of 1961 or two was the largest snowstorm you ever had in Kansas City. That thing was 58 inches high, and we were in there trying to put that place together. It was terrible. But we were trying to put that place together there, and, and so I had gone in debt, didn't have any money. In fact, I gave him a bad check for the rent. <laughs> <laughs> it was a terrible time. But anyway, there we, was enough we, snow they couldn't get, get they couldn't cash yeah, it. Right? Yeah, but I had. I, well, they didn't try. Yeah. Albert Tam was pretty nice, and they, I told them to hold the check, and they did. And I and the, and the people that owned the joint was a nice lady, so she held it. And I and I, we built a place there, and we opened that in February. And I went back in the back and sit on a on a case of slits, and prayed to all the gods in heaven, all of them. I didn't miss one. And I said, <laughs> I said, if y'all just let me get out of this hump, because I was about. Almost twenty, almost three thousand dollars in debt, and I hadn't been in that kind of debt. So I said, "Oh Lord, if you get me out of this, I'll." And man, we opened the door, and then we never looked back for nine years. Right. Yeah, the riots killed it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and 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 and, and talk talk about that. We had 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 a big success in yeah. the in in the restaurant. Yeah. And and you're in the nightclub. 
Right, in the nightclub, yeah. in the nightclub. Yeah. Uh, the restaurant's doing okay. Yeah, it's yeah. okay. And, 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 and the, the troubles of the 60s, the, yeah. the riot, the Martin right. Luther King, the death of Martin Luther King, yeah. et, et cetera, it happens. And th ch things change in Kansas City a lot. In the 60s, that, that, that was a big change. You know that. Everybody you, knows you that. You were very close to Bruce Watkins. Oh, he was my best friend. My, he was my running buddy. Right, yeah. running buddy. When he, when he runs for mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were his treasurer, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And everything else. And everything else. Yeah, everything everything else. else. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, things things in Kansas City are starting are starting to change. Well, they did. They started to change in '60. Well, you see, you got you got to remember now. A lot of things happened prior to that. You had you had uh, a lot of social problems that, that Kansas City had. In fact, the best thing you had when you had when you had fair housing and, and public accommodations, that's really what hurt black business. And explain that. Why did that hurt black business? Because when when you see, if you if you stop and think about it, you have if you have enough. Black business that, that you got to, in, in the course of an evening at that time, you had about 4,000, maybe 5,000 at most black folk that went out at nighttime. And if you had, you had maybe 10 or 15 uh, uh, facilities Places that held them, them yeah, yeah. that you could hold them. And so you divide that up, and so you put about 1,000 of them in each place. And, and you, got, you got about 15,000 people, haven't you? If right. You, on the course of the right. evening, traveling back and forth. I don't mean at one time, but traveling back and forth. But when you open up, not 15, but 95, right. now black folk can go anywhere. Though now that cuts that crowd down, so, doesn't so it? So the black businesses yeah. at so 18th and Vine, to suffer. they suffered. All black ministers suffered because right. when you let the, the, you know, the beasts out of the cages, they go everywhere. I mean, they don't <laughs> just stop, you know. They go everywhere. Right. But you have, and then you're competing. And one of the things that black folk didn't have to do in those days was compete with right. other more, and I hate to say this, but able joints. I mean, you had we could open up a joint. The, the high end places that yeah, had money yeah, already. We could open up a joint that come, and, you know. You know but good looking spaces. In fact, we call we call barbecue places joints until here lately. Right. Yeah. Well, and but but that is one of the successes of black businesses in Kansas City is in, in barbecue, which and in, in the early days it was white and black. I mean, there were white bar there's white barbecue and and black barbecue or not. Well, sure, the Rosedale was there Rosedale about and the same time we were. And, those guys. and then I think a, a, a friend of mine that had a uh, had a uh, grocery store, Twenty Second and Vine, uh, caught on to the fact that uh, the barbecue was an entity, and he opened up a Seventy One Highway in Prospect. His name was Farella, but he was a grocer when right. I was a kid. Yeah, right. But 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 one of the one of the the, the thing that happened in Kansas City yeah. that that you're really responsible for is before at 18th and Vine with the music and whatnot you yeah. get white customers for, oh, for yeah. that. Well, you got to understand during the segregated time, white could come to the black community, which was great because right. you had them both. But black couldn't go to white. That was right. the only different deal. But then <laughs> once the, the the open accommodation stuff happened and everybody's going 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 everywhere. Yeah. Then, and as you say, black businesses, the individual black businesses at 18th and Vine faded away, except for, for barbecue, except in a, way, in a way originally for Gates. Well, you were able to draw the white customers, I guess, is part of what I'm saying here. Well, I think we had a, I think we had a product that everybody had, had latched on to, and, and I'm so happy that we were able to get in on the front of it to, to get a taste. It's what you acquire taste for. And we got in there early enough that people acquired taste, and God bless them, thank them for coming, helping me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and and you're here, yeah, you bet. And you know, this city's become famous for barbecue. Yeah. Wall Street Journal did an yeah. article, mentioned mention you again, and uh, you know, it, it, all the all the magazines, whenever they write yeah. about Kansas City, they write about barbecue. And really, you're you're at the source of that. Uh, it, what is what? Where did that come from? Is it because we were a big cattle town? No, is that part no. of it? Well, you know, we were a big town, town, and that, and I think that's one of the one of the worst things that happened to Kansas City. Lost that identity, but because uh, I think Kansas City should be a cow. We town. are a cow town. It right. should be that, one. We were founded you, on you, that. You don't call it cow. You just call it agribusness. But I just think. It, well, yeah. You know, we lost the real Sorry, identity. Yeah. You know, agribusness. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. you know, yeah. It, yeah. But I think we should. Well. You see, one of the people, or one of the one of the greatest things that happened to Kansas City, of course, was 1954 when they brought Major League Baseball to Kansas City. Right. And then uh, when they had Major League to come to town, then they they made a Major League town out of this. Then you had it was surrounded by four barbecue places. You got to remember that one at 24th in Brooklyn, one at 18th in Brooklyn, one down at 18th in Euclid, and one on 19th. Well, they, we permeated the air with those obnoxious odors of barbecue. You know what I mean? <laughs> And then people up to the ballpark would smell those odors, and they say, "Where's yeah. that odor coming from?" You yeah, know. Right, and yeah. so we'd rush up there, and we'd 
give Mel Harmon some meat, and they would say, yeah. oh, they, and they break Long about the seventh inning when the yeah. A's were losing 12 oh, yeah. to nothing, people would start to you know, oh, man, show up yeah. at the, at the, at that, the restaurant. Yeah. And you can attribute the, the growth of barbecue to Major League in Kansas City, football and baseball. Yeah. Okay. And, and, uh, and, and but you did more than that. I mean, and, and, and obviously, you know, you ended up with at 1.6 restaurants yep. and, and you, you, you went beyond just the, the, the food itself and created a whole atmosphere and, and service. I mean, it's the meat, of course. I mean, talk, talk, talk for a second about the, the meat itself. Talk about closed pit barbecue versus other kinds of barbecue. That Everybody talks about that now. You know, between you and I, Closed pit, everybody knows. Open, when you're outdoors with open pit, right. the smoke leaves you. Right. Indoors with a closed pit, you, you contain the smoke. Everybody knows you that. It's just okay. a matter of taste. And, and barbecuing is really a personality. I mean, nobody in here, everybody, everybody in here can beat me barbecuing out in their backyard doing what they want to do for their taste. They can beat us anywhere in the world. What we do is commercially. Yeah. And we try to get a taste. You did it for thousands that, that of people we, a day. That's a different ball game. Right. Yeah, but right. it's merely a personality. You know, uh, you, if you go regionally, if you go to Virginia, you got one. You go to North Carolina, you got another. Right. Memphis, you got Memphis, another. Yeah. Texas, you got Texas, another. Yeah. You know, you got them everywhere. So okay. whatever you go. To so, but, but so it's not just the, the meat and the sauce, which are great, and I think everybody in this room would agree with that, but it's also it's, it's how you organize the restaurant. Service. Yeah, service is a huge yeah. thing. I mean, the high may I help you, yeah. the uh, the the cleanliness of the restaurant. I mean, yeah. it, it, what did that come from your mother and father? Or is no, that, is well, that you. A lot of that, that seems to be you. Well, that really did come from my dad. That how may I help you? Well, that greeting. See, you know, it started with my dad and me. You know, I was in nineteen and Vine one day. We had, you know, in those days we didn't have air condition. You had one exhaust fan for everything, and the, we had a screen door on. And the screen door in the old days, then they always screeched. You know, the screen, the screen door and slam. You know what I mean? Well, one day I was there alone, taking care of the business supposedly, and I happened to be <laughs> on one of the back counters reading a comic book. <laughs> and my dad creeped into the place real carefully to make sure the screen door didn't screech, and I didn't hear him. Uh -huh. And he slapped me on the back of my head. He said, "See, you could have got robbed." Ever test that? I say, now, when you come through that door, just hi. Make sure I recognize you. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's where it came from. Okay. Yeah. I got it. I got it. But, but, it, but it, you really made a, a, a philosophy out of that. Uh, yeah, I know. think it's a good, a good greeting, personally. Right. Right, it's great yeah. greeting and 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 training has been, been huge. Part of it. Rib Tech. Rib Tech. The College yeah. of Barbecue Knowledge. College of Barbecue Knowledge. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And my kids teach that stuff right now. George and uh, he's out here somewhere. And, and George is and here. Kiva, yeah, they 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 teach that stuff. Right? They, they make sure. Yes. The uh, the the whole thing set up because we had a, a young lady that 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 worked for us, and she was quite a lady. Uh, and she would have all kinds of sayings when people come through the door, and she'd recognize them. She'd say this, and she'd say that, and hi Joe, and hi Mo, and this. And when she gave the order, she'd say, "Make mine flush," or "Make mine run." And she would call uh, a chicken a, a barnyard pimp and that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> and then she wouldn't say put a lot of salt. She said baptize him and that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> So we, we had to stop all that stuff because every, everybody couldn't do that. So we said, hey, let's stay within this format. And so we tried to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you, so, you, so it's the same. You know, and part of it, I mean, it's the same thing that McDonald's did with hamburgers. Is you made, it, made sure that people would have the same experience, a good experience, wherever they went, whichever yeah. store they went into. We tried to. Yeah. yeah. Which I think is, is, is It'll true. It always happen, but they tried to, I'll tell you. Well... And, and, you know, so there, over time, barbecue has become a huge thing in oh, Kansas yeah. City and, yeah. and nationally. They even have it in New York now. Yeah. And, uh, he's uh, from Kansas City. The guy that went there in New York and started the Blue Flame, he's from Kansas Danny City. Danny Myers. And, you yeah. know him, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, and, and, but, but you've kept your, your reputation amidst the, the competition. What, what, do you, what do you, your success and your ability to keep doing this day after day, year after year, 
What, what, what do you attribute that to? A little of everything. I mean, a little bit of everything. You know, you stay with it. You stay with the, some of the things we do. I think a lot of the things that we do outside the barbecue business has a lot of effect on what's going on inside, just like what we're doing here. You know, I remember I was on the park board for 19 years. Right. Yeah, and so we had a lot of fun by doing that. Now, if I, if I remember this, this correctly, uh, after, after uh, Bruce Watkins ran for mayor, yeah. he ran against Dick Berkeley. Dick, yeah. Dick won, but he appointed yeah. uh, Bruce to the, to the Parks Board. They did. Dick did. Dick appointed yeah. Bruce to the Parks right. Board, and then Bruce died. He never, he never made one meeting. Never made it. Never no. made it. Uh, he died. And so right. you, his treasurer, the treasurer yeah. of Dick Berkeley's opponent, right. uh, Dick appointed you to replace him. Is that right? right? That's yeah. correct. You're absolutely right. Right. And, and oops. Sorry about that. Um, and, 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 but that became a, a, a you became a, a very, imp it, that became very important to you and it became very yeah. important to Kansas City. You're being yeah. on, the, on the Parks Board and eventually yeah. the president of the Parks Board. Yeah. And, and a lot of things that have happened that have changed literally the face of Kansas City happened while you were, you were doing that. The, the whole Brush Creek uh, renovation. Uh, the yeah. Brush Creek Quarter. Yeah, that, that we we tried to name that the Culture Quarter. They wouldn't. They didn't go for it though. From from Nelson Gallery all the way to Bruce Watkins Cultural Center, we tried to make, call it our Cultural Quarter, but that that hadn't caught on yet. But, but it will but one really, day. It, but it really is true because you've got you've got the Nelson, the library, the Plaza Library That's is correct. there. You've got UMKC. You've got the Repertory Theater. Now you've got Stowers, Stowers and Kaufman. Kaufman. That's correct. And you got Center. Gates. Um, and, oh. <laughs> I, Ollie, I was leading up to that. I, I was going to get I there. I thought I needed you a little help, so I, I thought I'd help you. There. <laughs> I was going to get there. Yeah, yeah, and 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 and, that, and that's re really true. And and barbecue is. And by the way, that. your sister was a big help to me yeah, on that that's board. Right. I want to say you know that. Board with you, yes, sir. Yeah, absolutely. And and one of the good things about that board, we could get things done with three of us, and so. If I wanted something done, I said, hey, let's get it done. She said, okay, that's it. So it didn't make no difference what the other one said. <laughs> I think a lot of folks resented that, you know, too. <laughs> that, you know, that, that reminds me of one of my favorite stories yeah. about you. You have to tell me if this is true or if my memory is correct about this. So you're the president of the Parks Board, and the Nelson Atkins, our great museum, decides mm -hmm. that they want to put uh, Klaus Oldenburg's shuttle shuttlecock out shot. in front. Yeah. And, 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 of course, it's pointed out to the Nelson, to the director of the Nelson at, at that point, uh, yes, that that the parks department actually owned the land and uh, and and they were they're going to have to go before the parks board. And I remember one Sunday in the Kansas City Star, the director of the Nelson Atkins was quoted as <laughs> as saying, "Well, we're going to have to explain to the parks board or to Mr. Gates mm -hmm. Art 101." Yeah, that's what he sure did. And, and then, if I remember correctly, in the next Sunday Kansas City Star, you were quoted as saying, "I'm going to have to explain to Director Wilson." Politics 101. <laughs> that's something, one something like that. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, I hope we, that's true. Yeah, almost. We got, we had a, we struck a, he wanted to put those shuttlecocks right in front in the middle of that line. And I, I kept telling him, I said, you know, that's an inside joke. And one of the things that people in those positions, the bourgeois, they want to have an inside, yeah, bourgeois, they want to have the inside knack on what's happening. Right. Well, nobody knew what that big old funny looking thing was out front and one out back. Well, they didn't know what that was. They didn't know that Nelson Garrett was a, was a net for the tennis court. Right, right, right. I don't yeah. know how many people know that today. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. So the, 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 the gallery itself, the building itself was supposed to be the net. With the net. And then the shuttlecock landed on this side and shuttlecock landed on the other side. Well, you could probably see that from an airplane, but you can see that, you know, right, going down. Right, right, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I just thought we ought to let everybody know let that. Him, let them know. And we made them move it a little bit to the right and to the left. So we had, that's a nice vista, man, from it the is. Nelson Gallery all the way through to the MRI. That's a great vista. I don't know. Only one sitting next to that is the is, is Washington Monument uh, right. thing. That's the only one I know that's in there. That's beautiful. And if you haven't seen it, you need to go and look at it and just look up and see how pretty that is. It's beautiful. That's one of yeah. the nicest sites in Kansas City. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. 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 And, and it's great what the Parks Department's done on the other, on the other end. Um, which which you were involved in, uh, so in, in, you probably never expected to do this out of coming coming out of you know running a bar barbecue business, but you've become a kind of civic icon. You've been involved in in, in lots of civic uh, affairs, uh, the Industrial Development Authority, the Sports yeah. Commission, the par yeah. Parks Department. Yeah. You were the Parks Department. And on the Missouri Highway Department. Missouri Highway. Don't forget that one. Yeah, and. Yeah. And, and so do you look at that as giving back to the community no. for your success? No, I don't. 
How do I you look at like giving back? No, I, I'm just appreciated the fact that I can do those things. You know, city's been pretty good to me. I mean, I, you know, I, I was born in 1823 Bellevue in a dish pan and had to go outdoors to the toilet in 1932. So 80 years here in Kansas City or thereabouts, and I can't say 80 years, I was in my mother's stomach 80 years ago, you okay. know what I mean? But I was on the way. Right. But, and to see what has developed in that time, that when I r rolled down Ward Parkway and wished, when my grandmother had to catch a Sunset Hill bus to go and clean up Miss Ann's kitchen, to the day, I feel pretty good. Yeah. 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 So I think I owe Kansas City a whole lot, and, and, and Kansas City is my favorite town, regardless to what somebody else says. And I love it, and I always will love it, and I, and I never can do enough for it. Great. And, and, and you, you, have, you have done a lot. I mean, the things that I mentioned and yeah. you cre helped create the Satchel Page uh, baseball stadium. Yes. stadium. Uh, you've been working lately on uh, your Buck friend Neal Buck O'Neill's yeah. kind of memorial Those to Buck O'Neill yeah. yeah. at 18th and, and, yeah. uh, and, and, and Paseo. Yeah. Uh, oh, Paseo. I, if you look at Paseo, Paseo people have not looked at. One of, one of the nicest people in Kansas City is a lady by the name of B. Davis. She's in the nursing home now. Uh, she was adamant about the Meyer Circle, that fountain in the middle right. of Meyer Circle. That right. She paid she her money to have it cut out. She, she wanted that to be just perfect. It's around the corner of her house, but she wanted that, and she spent a lot of money to help do that. And so I, I helped her do that. And I said, I wish it was more people like you, Ms. Davis, that would help on the east side of Truce, where it really needs some help. She volunteered. She did it. She helped. She put in the, uh, the pergolas and whatnot at 63rd and Paseo. She flowered that up until such time she's not able. She helped put the sunken garden back at 12th and Paseo, and she helped me do a lot of things. She became a good, good friend of mine. And so I really, and she, don't just realize, she put a lot of flowering up and down Ward Parkway. She right. did a lot of those pots and stuff. But she was, that's Ike Davis's wife, and well, she, she was a star in right. this town. She's a great lady. Oh, you know, absolutely. And, but you have done that on, on the east I side. I do that now. Your I, developments, the development yeah. at, 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 on 12th Street. Well, uh, if you look at Paseo from the river to 31st Street, it's a great looking uh, boulevard right today. Right. When I was on, when Truce I was on, Lake and yeah, Truce Lake, we did that. We put the fountains in there and made it yeah. look. People always said to me, in fact, we tried to, when I was on the park board, run the a Centennial Boulevard from Tiffany Springs to the Jerry Smith Farm, which is uh, a long way, and, and make that the, the Centennial Boulevard to be the spine of our boulevard system in the city. That never happened. I, they took me off the board too soon. But... Uh, <laughs> All of the boulevards, the connectivity is what we tried to do with that boulevard system to connect all of Kansas City under one spine so that you had a, and I think at one time they had a city in, in green. And so if you connect the city with connecting that boulevard system, that made everybody feel comfortable because we wanted our boulevards to be the finest, but in fact we wanted Ward Parkway to be the finest boulevard in this United States. And every other boulevard in the city looked just like it. Right. That's what we wanted, but you're not able to handle that because of the periphery. So what we come up with the other tax, we went from 10 cents a square foot, a linen foot, to, to a dollar budding foot. Then we were able to manicure the boulevards to get them up to par because we thought that if, 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 if boulevards could influence that which aligned them right. by making them look great, then they would make everything look great right. within a block and a half off the boulevards. Right. And if we could make all of our parks be the same influential person that they would influence that which surrounds them. Then now we got a city that will advocate the kind of a green beauty that we're looking for in park right. system. And I think that was, that's caught and on we've done a lot good. of that. It, it, yeah. it, 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 are, do you feel good about the direction of that and, and how we're I doing feel that? good about where we are then or where we were then, not, not where we are now. I think we should continue to do things like that and make Kansas City even more proud of yeah. what we is what the, the park, paying enough park board in Kansas City. And I want to say this is probably one of the greatest things in this city. And, and, right. and the people need to understand that the beauty of the city is one 
one of the things that invites people to your town, right. and you become proud of it if it's pretty and it's right. coming. What, and that's one of the what, things what I like Kessler about Kessler and Park Nichols Park. did in the in the oh, early absolutely. days is a great oh, spine for the for the city, absolutely. and it needs to be everywhere. And and, and maybe you see what's happening to the plaza, don't you? And the more the plaza extends itself outward, that's what people love the plaza. I mean, all over the world, it's the greatest thing ever. Right. Well, that that's what can happen. Right. 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 Well, it, before we finish, let's go back yeah. to barbecue for, okay. for a minute. That's a good idea. <laughs> Got to go back to barbecue. And, and you're, you're happy in, in this business. You, you still love what you do. You come to work every day. Now, wouldn't I be foolish not to? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and I, I noticed uh, we were talking earlier, uh, 47th Street uh, restaurant. Yes. Uh, that y what you've done there is kind of reminiscent of maybe where you started from, maybe the... Oh, the interior of the, the building interior. itself, there, yes. There's a lot of history in the yeah. interior. Well, one of the things we tried to do, we're trying to do now, and, and I hope that it happens in my lifetime, the, the, we've taken on the character of the area, which was early American. The early American ice house was there, and if you look at most of the surrounding buildings, they're early American, even up to the Nelson Gallery, where they had the gallery apartments just east of them there, early American, uh, and B. Davis pointed out to me that the shutters were black, so I said, that's great, but anyway, wires are white, you know? <laughs> so, but she, she had pointed out, but most of that stuff is early American. So we're trying to go to that, that kind of theme on the outside. On the inside of the one, the restaurant in 47, I tried to capture what 19 and Vine was all about. It has the building, the inside, interiorly, it has the Roberts Building, which was the first uh, building that was owned by black in Kansas City. He was uh, now the first building, first auto, new auto dealership east of the Mississippi was that particular guy, right. uh, Roberts. And he had the building there, and that's where we opened up the barbecue place. So we kind of picked that up, and there was an organization right around the corner called Cheerio Old Boys Club that did a lot of the philanthropic stuff in Kansas, and I think that they should be noted. Right. Uh, they, they bought the, one of the, at the, when Fairfax was the bummer plant, North American bummer plant during the war, right. they made B-25 bummers over there, right. you know, where they do General Motors today. And right. so that bummer plant over there produced a bummer, a 25 uh, B-25, and they called it the Brown Bummer, the Brown named Bomber. after Joe Lewis. After Joe and Lewis. so yeah. that they were part of that. They bought a tank and some other. So that philanthropic organization is kind of who we, who I kind of, so we call a room, Cheer Boys Club. Then right. there was a liquor store on the corner of 19 Vine called Rum Boogie. So we got a Rum got Boogie a rum room. Boogie. Yeah, yeah, and then Old Kentucky. And then yeah. we had another room right next to that called Miss Lizzie. Miss Lizzie was the lady that did the, uh, numbers in the, in the city. She had the policy in the back room, little card game Might back there. Might have to there. explain you the know, numbers yeah, and yeah, policy yeah, racket to people here. Do, but, uh, do really? Oh, people know Maybe numbers. Not. They know policy numbers. They, <laughs> everybody, they had, a one, had a little slip of paper on one right. side with red not and one side with blue. Policies. No, right. not insurance right. policy. Yeah. Right. It was kind of, kind of number slip. So. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, Ollie, uh, you, you've built a great business. You've given a huge amount uh, to the to the community in one one way or another. Um, it, what what's what's the accomplishment you're proudest of? What 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 do you want uh, to be remembered for? My kids, who are most of whom are here tonight. <laughs> it's still a family business. Your I, kids are in the no, business. I did a good job there. Right, yeah. right. Take credit for yeah, it. Yeah, you know? I did a good job. Exactly. Well, My wife didn't have nothing to do with it. Right. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, 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 at one point, you, you, you've won a lot of awards over the yeah. years, and, 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 and uh, you know, you, you, uh, you won the Kansas City Spirit Award. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that's representative. I think you are representative of the Kansas City Spirit, what you've done for the city, mm -hmm. what you've done with food. You've made this a, a, a better community, you've made this a happier community. It's, it is true, you may have made it a little bit fatter community. <laughs> thank but, you, Carl. But you have made this a great community, yeah. and Ollie Gates, I think all of us want to thank you for what you've done for the city. My pleasure. Yeah.